Just wanted to report back to you all about some interesting investigations that myself and Stephen Callaghan did this weekend on the stone that you see in the viewer here. Um, this stone is in the medieval graveyard in Lucan Village, which is behind O'Neill's pub. And it's kind of interesting because initially we thought it might be a medieval holy waterfront or stoop, as it's called, which sat into the wall of the church. Um, it was also reused as um, a gravestone of sorts in the 18th century because on the other side of this stone there's actually a carved piece of limestone inserted into the granite that you can see in front of you. However, we now believe that this may actually form part of a medieval high cross or market cross in Lucan village. In 1837, um, it was described by Samuel Taylor that Lucan had a very ancient and splendid cross and around which Roman Catholic funerals carried the coffin. Um, he described the cross as having been at the entrance to Colonel Vesey's estate. This is very interesting because last month I accessed some documents containing maps in them in the National Library manuscript room and the very first map that I opened showed very clearly in that area um, a big X and it said here is the cross. So what we do know is that in 1699 the cross was standing so that would be roughly where the entrance to the domain is beside what's now AIB Bank and the cross looks like it was right there possibly even in the middle of the road. Um, but I suppose by six, um, by seventeen, the mid 1700s because this part of it is being reused as a grave marker I think we can safely say that the rest of the stone, the shaft and the head of the, of the actual cross has gone missing. It may have been removed by the owners of Lucan House, um, Agbondisham VC and his wife, as part of the estate um, improvements and enclosure and walls and as part of the building works that he did. The other alternative is that the rest of the cross is still somewhere within the graveyard or within the domain or nearby. It may have been built into a wall or be lying flat on the ground. So what I want to show you here is a very simple method of seeing if you can actually detect any carving that's not visible to the naked eye. So we're using a method called RTI. It's actually a surprisingly simple method and it involves taking about 20 photographs of an object at night. Um, all you need is one shiny black ball, which you can actually see in the image here. Um, it's on the top right hand side of the stone. You take about 20 photographs with a stable light source and a stable, uh, stable camera and then you upload those photographs to the RTI viewer which is a piece of open source free software um, which is surprisingly easy to use and I just want to show you what happens when you change where the light is coming from. So in doing so you can see the natural variations in the surface are being highlighted. You can play around as well with the colour, the specularity and the highlight. So as I drag the light source around the little uh, ball here, on, you can actually just see that the, the natural lumps and bumps of the stone are sort of coming into view. Unfortunately, on this occasion, I suppose it would have been lovely to find some interlace or some nice carving if it did form part of a market cross or a high cross, that would have been really fantastic to find. But we can see nothing in this image that would suggest anything other than the natural striation in the granite stone itself. So I suppose it's disappointing that there's nothing there, but at least we know it for definite now. And I just thought you might be interested in seeing that software play. And more to follow, folks. So thank you very much.